Hello, Internet. We are back and we've got something interesting here for you. And let me explain the background. I've seen you people in South Africa at the Bryce and at uh, Smoke, what do you call it, shell houses, these type of things, you know, where people, where the veterans get together. And uh, it was Kevin Johnson who first said to me, Chris, you're Owen said, I'm great pencil. You know, when Kevin starts speaking uh, Afrikaans, you know, he's very serious about matters. I recall in our days at school, we would start speaking Dutch. Ek het gesicht. You know, things like that. And then you must know, we, we're really serious now. You better listen. Because the punch is going to follow the next sentence. And I was thinking to myself, and I looked in the mirror, and I said, Chris, yeah, you, you're too fat, man. There's something wrong with you. You better start doing something. And then I mentioned this to Rebecca, and of course, Less than a week later, the cycle, the bicycle thing for the gym arrived. And she went off to uh, Switzerland. And she expected me to look uh, a lot better and slimmer by the time she's back three weeks from, the, from then. That was three, four months ago. And I can tell you I'm averaging now about 10 kilos a day on this bike. I can do more, but I'm lazy. And uh, I do not make any excuses for my laziness either. That's just the way I am. Um, I've run enough in my life. But in all seriousness, folks, we need to get some kind of a hobby where we get off our asses and we start moving. Uh, just this morning, we had uh, a little prayer, the Lord's Prayer, came out on uh, Legacy. It's only two, three minutes. If you haven't seen it, please do so. But I can tell you what, what struck me there is how in good shape these people were. Man, I would love to be that fit again in my life. I mean, no, no diabetes, no nothing, no cancer, nothing. Uh, I don't have cancer, don't misunderstand me. But this is what it's about. And so I've got Fossi here on the other side. And I have pictures of him where he was a young fit man, looking quite quite good, actually. And uh, I know that he's got this hobby, and this hobby keeps him moving. And I call it Skatejach, but he always frowns when I say that. And so I asked him, I said, Fossi, why don't you tell us about your hobby? And perhaps there'll be other people who is interested as well. And perhaps then they will get over asses and they will start exploring. And who knows, we can uh, get your life to be a bit longer. Also remember this thing of Kevin Johnson, where they're doing younger for longer or something like that. Uh, we'll put the links in here for you. Uh, join these groups, get off your ass and start moving, man. Don't, don't sit there, just, just move. Remember what your corporal used to say to you about the Fs. Fossi, welcome. Thank you for doing this. Tell us what's your hobby and then what's it about? Hello, Chris. Um, always a pleasure to chat with you. Always, always. Um, okay, so, yeah, you've been nagging at me for a while, but this fits in, as you say, very well with what Kevin is, Kevin's initiative that's just started. Um, also in the background, uh, Dr. Eric, Dr. Eric, uh, the two of us are chatting about exactly this same topic, about getting guys to start reducing their waistlines. So that will be something for the future. But Chris has asked you the question, what do I do? I metal detect. Okay. I metal detect. Um, the most common question I ever always get asked or get asked, every time I'm on the beach. Have you found that bar of gold? Or what's the most valuable thing you found? Do you really want to know what the most valuable thing is that I have found? Ample access to sunshine. Yes, I'm in Ireland. Or to rain or to wind that blow the cobwebs away. Or hours of slow strolling. You heard me right. Um, I've been at this for three months, three years, sorry, not three months, three years. And when the Rinderpest was going around, this was a, an excuse for me to get within my five kilometers down to the beach. Yes, we've blessed, but uh, we live close to the to a, a number of beautiful beaches. Yes, this is Ireland. I know folk, but the, the beaches are beautiful. Any case, so... I go walking around with a machine that tattletales for me when there's picky. It's in the grond. So 
mostly, mostly, um, before we go any further, ak net man, I have to warn you, before you buy yourself a metal detector, and feel free to do so, because it will pay itself back. It's not like golf balls that you move them away and you never see them again and somebody else fishes them out of the pond where the alligators are and you break a club around a tree. It's not like that. Metal detectors pay themselves back. And I've actually heard of stories where the detector paid itself back on the very first outing. Gold rings... That kind of thing get found. Now, if you strike a gold ring, I haven't had one single one this year yet. But let's get back to what I want to say. The law is a very important thing to know in the country that you are if you want to get yourself a metal detector. So you first study that. Secondly, study what is the most suitable detector for your environment. But... Those are very, very important. Jelle moet weet wat die wet sê, voordat jelle vir jelle selvers metaalverklikker. Dit werk nie. Ek gaan nie uit om te gaan metaalverklik nie. Ek, <laughs> dit werk net nie op Afrikaans nie. Maar, dit werk. Ok, so waar kom die story vandaan? Koos het gesê, lig jou self van jou achterwereld af. Vroeger. Maar dit het ek vir myself gesê lang voor ek koos geken het. Ek het achtergekom, ek sit by ja. En ek sit nie voor die TV nie, ek kyk nie TV nie. Maar ek sit by ja, achter my laptop en as, as ek nie skryf nie, dan doen ek een bykie hiervan en een bykie daarvan. En so het het aangegaan. Maar ek het achtergekom, my ook kniekoppe rugby beserings en my wervels rugby beserings en werks beserings. Ek sikkel, ek sikkel. Ek moet uit, maar by good lady and myself, used to go down to the beach, and she weighs about 61 whatever kilos, and I weigh, those days, those days, I was pushing 97, 98 kilos. In any case, um, we were, I know we're type 2 diabetic, but that's induced. I can tell you lots of stories about that side of life as well. In any case, my knees are so buggered that I used to say to her, stop running, I'm hurting, I'm hurting. Literally, two kilos into a walk, I didn't want to walk anymore because it is sore, it's excruciating. But I had to find a way of being upright. I can't sit. And this is the key to metal detecting. You can take your detector out there. And something else that suits me immensely is I can look down because my neck vertebra, so I look down and it's, there's no stress. And I swing my detector and I walk at my pace, but I'm upright. This is the key. I'm off a chair. I'm breathing fresh air, as fresh as what it can be. And I'm getting vitamin D and the cobwebs are getting blown away and occasionally I get irrigated by the clouds and it's all fun folk winter winter storms churns the beaches up and then you can find fresh targets i'm going to include just a few photos of things i have found coins i have found and i'll start with mentioning queen victoria 925 silver, four pence. I think there is only one other detectorist on YouTube that has found one of those. I've had the blessing of finding one. They're tiny, they're like your thumbnail. I'll put a photo in here. The coin was encased in muck, so it didn't come out that well, but I could identify it. Things like that. I found a little silver spoon that long the other day. And all the hallmarks tell you the whole history. And that's the beauty of it too. I come home and my good lady does the investigation or we do it together. Um, I know, I didn't know anything about an Irish coin. The pre, pre, when we got to Ireland in, 
at the turn of the century, uh, the last century, the punt, the Irish pound currency was still in use. We used it, but I didn't pay any heed to it. Of course, they withdrew it for the euro to come in. So those coins, uh, and this has happened all over, all over Europe. What happened to the, the nickel? A lot of coins had a high nickel content. What happened to that? That was sold to the East. So you don't find those coins anymore because in mass, in bulk, uh, tons and tons and tons and tons of alloys were sold. So it, those co coins are becoming scarcer and scarcer to find. But in Ireland, UK currency was in use up until about the 50s, I still find 50s, 1950s UK coins on beaches here. Yeah. And then, of course, you find the fresh drops, occasional holiday makers drops. So I have learned so much about history, about just common sense stuff about what a detector does, how it can. Uh, one or two guys uh, on on WhatsApp, call me. Uh, what is die Owens? Mine fears. What did Allah Khalu plan si pat af? Um, to say for the year now the other day, nee nee, you understand me. I come from the south af. Ons het nie geloop plekke toe nie. <laughs> ons het gevlieg. Ons het vooral nie geloop daar waar die die goeikies boef 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 en die grond maak nie. Ons het boef boef van boe af gemak. In geval ek gorl. These are. Uh, uh, you might have noticed I'm rather passionate about this. It's it's something to be passionate about because it gets you outside, it gets you off your posterior, and key year two, I have found, I have found, um, it, my headspace. I go down to the beach for two or three hours. Clears the cobwebs, literally. It allows you to breathe mentally if you're on your own. That's why I love winter so much. In the summer, the beaches are too crowded. Uh, you, you, I don't really detect unless I go very early in the mornings, uh, depending on the tides. That's another thing. The one thing I do want to say about um, farmland detecting and things like that, because the law is so funny in Ireland, I tend to shy away from those kinds of things. In Ireland, the law says, if you have been found to disturb something of historical interest, now they can claim anything is historical interest, then you've broken the law already. But on the beach, they can't claim that. The, the, between the, the, the low tide and the high tide mark, it's sort of... That's why I love the beaches so much. Also, I love the beaches because to me, mentally, it's open spaces because you can't see over the hill. You cannot. So, I come from the great flaktes there from the Africa continent of, I need space. And Europe, anywhere in Europe you go, there's not much space anywhere apart from in, in, in Spain and Portugal. Uh, areas that I love too. And okay, I, I could now buy I could now plump genoeg praat. Think of your head space. I often go down there to go and swing a detector. Uh, we've been going through uh, difficult times. You all know it. We we lived through the Rinder Pest and all those things that impacted you. I had to make a decision about work not long before that. Well, it was forced on me, uh, the decision that I had to basically uh, retire early. Um, and, 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 but that doesn't stop me from wanting to be outside, uh, the, 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 the boss and me will not go around the loop by the kant. So I often go down to the beach with something pressing on the mind. And when I come back off the beach, uh, a prayer or three later, the answer is there. For me, the good Lord knows how to shape my thoughts when I'm there, uh, anywhere I am. But it seems to work better for me to go and get the cobwebs blown, to do a bit of exercise. And you know what I have found that I can say this? My knees, I couldn't get to, onto my knees 
and up more than twice or three times before I started detecting. But now because I have to, I've worked ways and my knees are better. Yeah, believe it or not, because you, you your, your muscles are doing something from a health point of view. And boy, don't ask me to, to run 100 meters because I'll fall down. But at least I'm upright. I can now yield them all genoeg gehoor of course. Yield them all, yield them all. Um, if you want to contact me about it, uh, just leave a comment below here. We can talk about it. Remember, as I say to you, the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages of this pastime hobby uh, on an interest scale from 1 to 10. Uh, if you go and what else can can guys of our age, 50 plus, 60 plus, 70 plus do? I know there's some people that will tell you they walk extensively, and they, but yes, they're getting fresh air. But if you want to do something apart from walk, okay, the other options you have is get yourself a camera. I have a decent good camera. We use that. It's also, both of my missus and myself, it's also uh, uh, one of the reasons why we love winter storms so much is because we can go out and go and capture on photo and on video winter storms. And no, I'm not always glued behind the camera. I look over the camera. Any case, so there are ways of us to get outside. There are initiatives to help you. If it's uh, something of psychological importance to you to to get help with, there are avenues and channels on this channel to help you. Franz van Staden's names pop up. His latest initiative with Kevin, the two of them, three two x three two lads, got together to offer you help. And I'm saying thank you to them, and I'm saying thank you to Kurs, and I'm saying thank you to all of you out there who want to be part and parcel of looking after yourselves a bit better. Thank you, Mana. Damas, boys and girls, thank you very much. Thank you, Kurs. Now, of course, you know, in law, the evidence of a single witness is always the best suspect. And so now I'm going to ask your missus, since I know she can hear me. No, she's and not she's there. In... She's, she's, oh, she's not there anymore. No, she's down. But if she was there, would she have agreed with you? On the detector? On... Yes, that you come back and your mind is a bit clear and you're in a better mood and it's good for you. Yeah, it's a pity that. she's not here because she will tell you that. I often feel guilty when, 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 when we're going through a particularly bad patch not us, not our um, people. Every family has something that's always happening somewhere along the line. Um, I feel guilty that I go out and I go and pleasure myself and leave her at home. But she prefers staying at home. She just uh, told me, okay, if we go down to the beach and I don't take my detector and I take my camera, then, then she's very keen. <laughs> then she takes her camera, then we go down for an hour or two together. We love that too. We still do that. But yes, she'll agree with you that my humors are most often revived <laughs> after I've had a good uh, good detecting spell, especially if I find good stuff um, or something of interest. And to me, is I tease about it all the time. Uh, I say this detector has paid itself. Well, it's my second detector and the other equipment associated with it. Paid itself over and over. I buy the lotto tickets with money. I find other people's money. And I I, I, I tease. I always say the day is going to come that there's going to be big headlines across the papers. Metal detectorist wins millions with other people's money. Yeah, that's me. I don't spend our family money on that. It's only metal detecting money. And I often contribute to the park. Of course, you pick up hands full of coins. So there's always parking money in this house. Always. blah de blah de blah So I contribute. I give back a little bit. Any case. Yeah, of course. Sorry. Yeah. That work. That work. And say, so you'll them all psalms them that help us gemoedere.
Uh, may I ask you what is this thing weigh? How heavy is it? Like R1 rifle? Uh, no, no. It's like seven R1 rifles. My machine, I think, weighs 1.2 kilos. And that's fully loaded, fully charged, uh, fully everything in total. But then I wear a little uh, sacky with me around my, my, my waist that has my pinpointer a small little digging tool. Oh, those are a few other things you need to get. A pinpointer, which costs you about 100 euro, a decent one, but they last for a long, long time. Just ensure that you always use rechargeable batteries in them because lots of detectors used to come out with normal standard batteries and that used to eat more money than what the detector eventually costs. So make sure, uh, if you want to know more about the specifics, come and ask me, uh, not for you. But you need other bits and pieces, small spade or a beach scoop or things like that too. But as I've said over and over, uh, the detector pays for itself and all the other bits and pieces. So yeah, 1.2 kilos, that I think, was uh, my right arm. I, in the beginning, I used to switch arms, uh, but I'm not that ambidextrous. Then I started stepping on my, my own detector's coil and for fear of breaking it, your arm soon comes by. So I, I balance by carrying the other equipment in in the left hand, my spade. So there's your balance. I think my spade weighs, weighs more than, than the detector. Okay, yeah, that's not very sorry. That's why I'm not as a real gliding. Ariane was 7 kilos. Leeg. How does it get my kop vast? Misschien gorrelen. Voor ons is 7 kilo's as jong, so voor jou vast al heel tyd. It's a horrible bloody sessant gehad, ek heb die keer die pas my diening so voor jou. Ja. Hoe jou kop is alright, ek weet, ek kan volg jou kop is alright. Ja, kan hom daar. So voor jou, die nie vader. Ja, en nou ons van daar al hy goed. En dan moet jy hom so, so, hier, dit was, dit was pijn. En dan het jy hom val, dan moet jy val langsom. Oh, 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 ja. Ja, ja, nee, nee, ons kan nie langs baie stories vertel, maar anyway, wat kost so iets vir ons, is dit een dier hobby? Ok, um, jy kan een uh, kinder entry level detector gaan koop vir nou praat ek euro, dis vir my baie, baie interessant, die mense verkoop om in dollar, pond of euro die selfde, prijs, so 5, 590 dollar kan jy hom gaan koop, maar dan voer jy hom na, dit is ook nog een ander story van, so jy kan begin wat is, wat is 300 euro dis 600 6000 rand ja, 6000 rand kan jy, een redelike goeie detector wat vir, vir al goed werk op grond, jy sal goud kry met al mense uh, gaan kry vir die klas van geld. Um, wat gebeur het in die, in die, in die uh, industrie, is dat uh, hulle beginne moet oorloot onder mekaar en tussen mekaar. Daar is detectors daar van duisende rande. Daar is specifieke goud detectors wat uh, partij companies verkoop in Afrika, uh, waar die manne, uh, wat is een nugget? gold nuggets, they find nuggets, so you can, depends on, but for you and me, as a hobbyist, anything from about, what did we say there, 6,000 rand, maybe, maybe 5,000 rand upwards, you'll find a detector, and look out for second hands, and rebuilds, they, they also exist, there's good companies in South Africa, I can't, I'm not giving anybody a shout here, because I haven't any approval for that, but there are good companies in South Africa, um, that sell, top of the range detectors uh, and all if everything from, from starter upwards. So yeah, you're going to spend money. The, the higher up the, the, if you go to 10,000 Rand, 15,000 Rand, you're going to get a good machine. My machine, the equivalent of 500 Euro. Um, so what is that? Of course, five, that's 10,000 Rand. Yeah. 10,000 rand. So, yeah, mm. find one nugget. 
Jā, man nav stiecēt vienu, tas nav stiecēt, jo tas nav pēc mani vērdi. Vat, ko sēt jau viņi ģinkiram un doktori tas ir? Vat, ko sēt jau um, um, ārtum, lai tie krai? Jā. Bet vienu viņi sēt, tas ir jau desabā, desabā lēkam mani, ka mums ir atkā brēk fēr. Kā nav kā tu vēk. Un jau viņi nīt tā, ko viņi kā tu ir alans, kā sēt, kā sēt, kā rāzī man vēl. Bet, bet jau, man ir trons, ka kopī internets jau ir Man rāja, tu fosi, lai vietējais āstāks, vēl āstē dan vākā nolēk, man teikt, ne, jau videos, lai vietējais, ja lai kā nav, vai jau videos māk, vēl jau fonds ne un kūt? Um, jā, fosi, at treasure and treats, uh, di, ma jau kā nav, ki, jau arī drionat kā kāna, so, by the way, ik <laughs> vēl dat nav nie eindelijk doen nie, ma, uh, soos YouTube werk, um, baie van jy die metal, detecting channels, as hulle milestones bereik, dan gee hulle iets weg, van hulle fondse, so, vir my 300, uh, subscriber milestone, gee ek salver weg, en laat ek net kyk, of dat die rechte ene is, dit is die, sy maaikie, ehm, uh, Dat is een 1944 50% silver sixpence, George the Sixth. Gekry op een beach, hier net noord van ons. En ek gee een paar verskillende ander munten weg. Ek sal op my kanaal een uh, giveaway video doen in die volgende paar weke. En dan kan jylle sien wat ek gaan weggee. Ek sal foto's insit hier so van eindelijk van die, die hierdie is een 1944, die een wat ek weggee, wel, is in 1943, uh, wat skoon gemaakt is dier een juwelier en een ultrasound, wat nog vir my ander idee gegeet, ek gaan vir my een klein ultrasound kry om munte skoon te maak, want ek het die assign methodes getraai en, en, en die black is, nie black is beautiful nie, wat is hy, uh, sil het bang vir black mold en al die klas van goeders probeer om munte skoon te maak, en meeste van die keer in die ekie die munt op, maar ultrasonics kan niks doen aan die munt self nie, hy haal net die vuil goed af. So, ja, uh, Fossi at Treasure and Treats, ek het, uh, ek het, uh, jylle sal hom allemaal herken, want as ek comments maak op, comments maak op die kanaal hieronder, dan sien jylle allemaal die prankie, dis my, my prankie, maar ek wil dalke ander prankie insit, Dis, hy is mooier as ek, so laat ek hom so hou voor my, daar sy, daar sy, mooier prankie. Um, ek wil een ander prankie maak, so dat jy vraag van interessante dinge. Ek het so paar maande terug, I, I, I detected something that I thought was the pull tab off the top of a, of a can, and I thought to myself, no, 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 don't dig that. And I went back to it, because no, there were no other signals, and I dug it, and Literally two to three inches in, in the soft sand, I saw this thing fly out. It's a pity my good lady isn't here because she carries it in her wallet. When we got home and we did the research, and obviously I'll leave photos, and I'll actually even leave a little video snip at the end of, uh, as Chris has told me, I'll edit my own video. Uh, I'll leave a little snip of discovering this thing. This thing turned out to be uh, King Alexander the Third, listen closely, folk of Scotland. Does that name ring a bell with you, King Alexander the Third? And this coin, it's a hammered silver penny. Those days they didn't have pre- print uh, presses to press the coins. They used to take thin sheets of silver and cut it roughly, the rough size of it, and then bang it on both sides with, with, with the, the form to make these coins. They called hammered coins. This particular one, because of the, the logo and the stuff on it, can only have been hammered between, listen closely, folk, 1280 and 1286 when that king died. Yes, I found one on an Irish beach. That's the, that's the, I get goose flesh. I still get goose flesh because how, how often in your life do you have that blessing? 
And that's one of the many, many blessings that this hobby can give you. Okay, now that you have already talked about it. Yeah, I want to know myself. When you last time I saw something that a thousand years old is, what the other people have made. I'm talking about a bloody club over the long street. Something that physics has made is a thousand years old. That is amazing. So this is 1286, what's that, uh, uh, 800 years. But I had yesterday thought, Koos, I had a thought by me up. There is nothing, 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 nothing on this earth that is made through a man's hand that can be held like something that God has made. Gold and silver, we can reshape it but it was not made by us. Ons het, kan, kyk eister, ons kan eister erts maak, maar het roes. Daai klas van goed is, ons kan massieve gebouwe bou, maar die, 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 die oorwoud sal hulle oorvat, eventually. What I'm trying to say, folk, is the, the beauty of finding real things like, real things like that, that yes, they were ma man-made, but it's only because they were man-made with uh, the precious metals available copper decays in the ground i'll show you uh, photos of copper coins 100 years old 200 years old they decay in the ground um nickel the sea eats nickel i can show you uh no i i can sit here for forever and ever there's two nickel these are the identical this is a six but a, a threepence irish threepence that's a 1940 it was still made of nickel that's why it looks like it. He has a 42. When they started making them of copper nickel, that's how it comes out of the same beach. Different days, but that's the difference in the different metals. This is what happens. This, uh, 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 there's always coins lying wherever I am. This is a 50, a euro 50 cent that came out of the... Look what it looks like. I've got, I've got bottle full of euro one, two, and five cent pieces. They steel clad. They go into the ground. They they rust to smithereens. Literally. Literally. Look at that. Can you see the that's what happens to our modern coinage? It it rots. It rots. So there you go. Bottle full of them to the almost to the top there. Of I, I keep them because the, the 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 mischief in me says I want to take them to the bank one day and say, Yeah, take your coins, pay me. <laughs> I want the value of these. <laughs> Otherwise, I just throw them in the bin because they are yeah, or take them to the scrapper. Anyway, that's another advantage. Uh, pick up loads and loads of brass and aluminium. Put them in, come home and segregate them. And at the end of the year, I've got enough money for a bottle of wine. I can't doubt once in a couple of weeks, I'll get you with one. I mean, so this is more interesting. Excuse me, this is very interesting. I go from the skin, it's my good to see. The skin is what we're going to do. And I can't doubt once in a couple of weeks, I'll get you with one. I can't doubt once in a couple of weeks, I'll get you with one. I can't doubt once in a couple of weeks, I'll get you with one. I can't doubt once in a couple of weeks, I'll get you with one. Goed, waar die ooms verloor het in die bome, was die Zambezi afgekom het. Want so ons het gaan uitgerouw en natuurlijk al die bome in Warals en dan kan ons het verkoop vir sakjaak. Ons het goeie geld gemaakt so en by die see was ons altyd op soek na hierdie, wat is hierdie loodgoed wat jy aan die hoek vastmaak? Jy het wat vir praat vir sê. Sinker, sinker, vir jy wat mooi. So dis wat ek nou gedink het, as die ouwe die coins van jou begin maak en is jy kree, mens kan kunstig raak met dit. So wat ek vir jy wil sê is, Kom ons slaan my Engels toe weer. Ladies, gentlemen, thank you for your time. If you have some kind of a hobby which, which involves walking, not to the pub, I know what you're thinking there on the other side, but that's not a hobby, man. That, that's getting you in trouble. But that's, uh, that's not what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Come and talk to us. Let us see if we can get our fellow veterans out of their uh, couches, out of their asses, off of their asses, and let them start walking. And the last request, if you win, if you follow our advice here today, tell us about it. And if you uh, find the Kruger millions, the Kruger millionaire, 110%,
Ja, ik zal spelen met jou, uh, Fossi. 50, 50, geld. Ja, ik ja, heb het gisteren natuurlijk mijn lotto kaartje gekoop, ge- omdat uh, vanavond zijn lotto, omdat ik uh, weet ik kan die lotto afhalen in een of andere dag. Uh, ja, feel free, folk. Ik ga via de ISO stukjes en zet. Van, uh, vooral van die, die fonds van die, uh, King Alexander the Third, Hammond, Silver, Penny. Zeker uh, goed gebeur, misschien een keer in een leven. Maar als ik niet detector gehad het nie, was ik niet op dat strand nie, het ek nie die ding gekry nie. En dis die, die, een van die baie sieninge, soos ek sê. Well, if you find the unexpected, and this looks like the unexpected, that was in that little hole, ringing 27s. Look at that. Can we turn it around there? This is to be researched. But if you ask me, the closest thing to this being is a hammered coin. Have I found my first ever hammered coin? Wow. This is in County Wexford somewhere. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Yo, this will be added to something else. Wow.